All right. Hello, everyone, and welcome to this webinar about the LabStats Remote Access Dashboard. <clears throat> We're glad that you are able to join us today. My name is Ben Ploquin, and I am one of the account executives here at LabStats. Uh, we are aware that you probably went through some very challenging times those past few months. Um, we're aware how busy you probably were and how busy you are probably still are. Uh, so thank you for, for taking the time um, to be here today. Thank you for taking the time to, to join us and to look into this solution. We hope that uh, what you're about to see today will help you um, with the challenges that you are facing. Um, feel free to ask any questions at any time, um, but if you can please keep them to the Q&A sections, that would be great. Some of them will be answered directly by our moderators, and um, we will also go through some of your question at the end of this presentation. And so of course, we are going to look into the LabStats remote access solution here in a minute. Um, but before we start looking at it, I would like to tell you just a little bit about who we are and what LabStats is historically, um, just for those of you who are not familiar um, with LabStats. So very quickly, LabStats has been around for about 15 years, um, and our core mission is to help higher education institutions to right-size their computers and software resources and to improve the student experience. Um, we help you do that through a little lightweight client um, that is installed on your campus computers. Um, and this client reports what is happening on these computers to our interface. Um, for example, here on the home page, you can see which computers are in use and which computers are available. Um, LabStats allows you to click on specific stations to see what is happening um, to those stations. You're able to see who uses the computers um, and what the software being used is. Um, one thing that LabStats does when it's, un when, when it's installed on a computer is that it's pull, it pulls the metadata um, and that it also pulls a software inventory, which um, helps us to um, even better that remote access tool for you to make it even better. Um, the data that LabStats collects um, can be used through um, reports that you can use to make data-driven decisions. So very quickly, I will just show you um, that report here. Um, it's one of our favorite reports, the two-click reports, and in two easy clicks, it will show you your 10 least used computers and your 10 most used computers. Um, that's the type of, of information that LabStats is going to give to you. Another very good one is that for your software, it's going to give you your max concurrent usage. How many students are using a specific software at one time? Um, and here, for example, I pull the image editing software. Um, and if you look at any of those, you're able to see how they are used, for example, Corel Pen Shop here is used by four students at one time. Then you're able to see how many licenses you have within LabStats and if your resources are right size or not. Now, if you choose to right size your resources, you can uh, let your students know where those resources are with Lab Maps, um, which is maps that you can display on your school website or Lab Find, which is an app they will download on their phone to find the resources that they need. So that's a very quick overview of who we are. If you're not a customer yet, and if this side of, of the product looks good to you, please let me know and we will be able to help you with that as well. Because the remote access dashboard that you're about to see is only a feature of the LabStats product. All that you just saw is include, included in the LabStats description. So that's why we are showing it to you today because it's something that if you decide to try LabStats, it's something that you can try as well. And that would be included in your subscription if you decide to join us. So again, what you just saw is who we are historically. It's what we've been doing for about 15 years. We're always trying to get better at it. However, as you are aware, of course, a few months ago, COVID-19 happened. 
and that kind of changed everything um, in the higher education uh, world. And we try to help out at all level. And the remote access tool um, is what um, we came up with to um, help you. Um, as I said, we are in the business of helping IT people and students. Um, so when universities and colleges started to close their campuses because of COVID-19, um, we've reached out to our customers and we asked how we could help. And really one of their biggest challenges was to um, let their students know what resources were available so they could, they could continue to access the computers and the software that they need uh, for their program um, and for their degrees. Um, and really accessing those resources while they are away from campus. We know that the connection part is easy. You know, you can fairly easily help the students to connect to a computer on campus. Um, however, what is hard is um, to tell your students to know what resources are available again for the connection you can do what you want microsoft remote desktop for windows vnc for Macs. you can use a vpn you can use a web-based remote access delivery system such as apache guacamole the difficult part again is to let your student know what is available and to direct the traffic to the computers that you want them to use. So that when, that's when LabStats came in to help. Um, and the way we are doing that is with the um, live availability feature that you see right here. Um, here in the core product, this feature again lets you know what computers are in use and what computer are available. So we really built the remote access tool from um, this um, feature. So again, the client detects when a computer is available or when it is in used, and then we created a dynamic list, a dynamic dashboard with those computers so your students can only see the computers that are available at this moment, and they can only access available computers. Of course, that's not the only problem, um, letting your student know what is available is not the only problem that the remote access dashboard is solving. It solves really three major problems that are most likely going to sound familiar to you and that you probably went through and had to work around. Um, first, you most likely have already purchased software on campus, either at the beginning of the year or when you renewed your software. Um, and really with the remote access tool, it allows you to not duplicate those costs because a lot of schools had to go ahead and repurchase software that, it, that they had already purchased in cloud version. So their students could access those software licenses that they needed. Well, the remote access tool eliminate the need to duplicate, duplicate these costs. Um, the second problem that it's gonna address is that some software cannot be virtualized. A lot of them can be, um, but Adobe Creative Cloud, animation software, CAD, and many others cannot be virtualized. So this remote access tool is going to help your students access those software that cannot be virtualized directly on the machines that are on campus while they are away at home. Um, now the third problem that it's gonna address, the third main problem is that I mentioned Adobe, um, they've been really good. They've been providing some schools with free licenses for their students. Um, many software companies have done that, but even though they are doing that, there is no guarantee that your students have the required equipment and the processing power to use this specific software. Um, a lot of students are using Chromebooks. A lot of students are using smaller, um, laptops um, so really with the remote access dashboard they can still access a computer on campus that has the software they need and the processing power they need to run the software that they need for their class and their program um, 
So let's jump into the actual remote access dashboard here. Um, first of all, what you are seeing is kind of like the new and improved version of the remote access dashboard. Um, it's something that our development team has been working really hard on for those past few months to make sure we deliver to you a product that is relevant and that is useful. Um, you can see that you have the ability to have your school logo display on the remote access dashboard again, so you can still um, make sure your students are aware of your brand and um, of the schools they are part of, of course, you can personalize that. Um, and then you can add instructions either here in the header, or you can add instructions for specific labs. Um, so those are features that those are the last features for this remote access dashboard that, um, that came out. Um, what you're seeing here uses the new LabSats API to make a few different calls. Um, so first you can choose which groups you are going to display right here on your remote access tool. Again, if you're not a LabSats customer, when you are going to deploy lab stats to your computers, you are going to create groups. Um, you can create the same hierarchy you have on campus. Um, you can import it in that. It works very well with Active Directory if it's something you want to do. So really, you can organize your groups that you have on campus um, in lab stats. And then you are going to tell us which groups you want to be displayed here. And you choose that. You can have all of the groups that you have in lab stats to show in there, or you can just have a few groups showing on the remote access dashboard. Um, the second call that it's going to make is that it's going to show, as I already said, real time availability. Students do not have to click through a bunch of different computers to find a computer that is available. Um, the list is showing only available computers, computers that they can use at the moment and that are free um, to be used. Um, and a, another um, way that we help your students to make sure they access a computer that is free is that that list is randomized which means that for a specific school, the dashboard will not offer the same computers, the same first options to the same student, but to different students. For example, um, this first computer right here is the first choice I have. However, for another um, students who would log into the dashboard, that would be the one showing, let's say. That would be a different one. Anyway, um, that is the calls that the um, API um, is making. Um, and you can see here that the list is organized the same way that the labs are organized on campus. Um, so you have the labs using the same naming convention, convention that is used on campus. And we encourage you to do that. The schools are reporting to us that it is easier for the students if they see the labs that um, they are used to go to if they see the, the actual names of the labs. Um, but again, that will be um, driven by need. You know, it will be depending on how you are organized and how you are going to deliver to your students um, this solution. Um, the Downtown University of Idaho Falls is not a real university. That's um, the LabSats instance for the remote access dashboard. So now we are going to go ahead and jump into some actual real customers so you can see um, what it looks like. Um, first of all, I would like to show you the University of Canberra uh, remote access dashboard. Obviously, um, they are in Australia. And we're going to use their dashboard this morning so you can kind of see what it looks like on the student side. Um, so when a student gets to the dashboard, they are going to look, of course, at the list of computers that's available to them. Um, as I said earlier, the remote access dash, the LabSats core product, sorry, it's going, the client is going to pull a list of the software that are on each machines. So with that list, you can create a PDF document or you can include it on the actual labs, um, but you can let your student know what is available in on those specific computers. So here, the University of Canberra, they attached a PDF document to their remote access dashboard so their students can see which software is on which computer. So the student would come on the dashboard, 
find the software they need from that list. And then when they, once they know which computer has the software, they would go to the specific computer and click on connect. So once they've done that, um, they will be prompted to download the RDP file. Um, so of course it's going to open on a different screen, but here it is. And then they will go ahead and click on connect. And the University of Canberra, like a lot of the schools we're working with, is using the RD gateway server. So the students would be prompted to put in their username for the school as well as their, as their password. And then they will click OK. And then they will be good to go and will be able to um, get started on the computer uh, that they need with the software they need. So. Again, that's a very good example of what schools are doing. Um, they are using the um, RD gateway to direct traffic and ensure um, their security by having their students, again, entering their username and passwords. Um, so that list of software right here is a customization that they requested and that we help them put together. So if you're going to request any type of personalized um, things like that, please let us know and we will be happy to look into that and see if we can help you with that. Let's look at the second one here, Western Michigan University. Um, Western Michigan, Michigan University, as you can see here, uses the header to provide their students with some, um, with some information about how to connect to the VPN. Um, they are using a VPN um, and again, that header is a great feature because you can really display and convey any information that you want to your students from there. Um, again, as I said, they are using a VPN. So they included a link here that's not to a PDF like uh, the University of Canberra, but that is actually connecting them to a secondary web page that is going to give very detailed instructions to their students how to connect to the VPN how to do that if you're using Windows, if you're using a Mac, a Chromebook, and then um, how to connect on those machines, um, what device you're using, what you're connecting to. So very detailed, um, very well done to um, help the students experience and to make sure that the students can really um, easily get onto those machines with all the information um, that they need. Um, and of course, here at the bottom, they are all also providing their students with a list of software for each lab. So you can see that each lab has a drop down option, and then the students can see which softwares are available um, in those labs. So again, a great way to show your students what's available to help your students with the information that they need to connect to that um, Western Michigan University here really did a um, great job. Um, so now we are going to go ahead and look at our last example for today. Um, it is um, SUNY Cortland. Um, it is uh, in New York area, so still on this side of the pound. Um, and here um, you can see again that the header is used to convey student to convey information um, to the students. So it is possible with the remote access tool for students to use Macs to connect to PCs. They just need to download an RDP file on their Mac. And it's the same if they are going to use a PC and want to access a Mac. They will just need to download the VNC file so they can use the dashboard. And that's what they are explained here on how to do that. You know, they have information straight here, um, how to do that. Now, um, what SUNY Cortland is doing um, is they are actually providing their students with a button under each lab. The students do not need to go through a full list like the University of Canberra or like Western Michigan University. They can just click under the lab on this button and see which software is available for this specific lab. So that's kind of newer. That's something that schools have been doing lately. If it looks good to you again, that's something we can help you. Um, we can help you set up. So um, 
it is more user friendly for your students and again you can make sure that the student experience is maintained even though they have to stay home or they might not always be able to um, to access campus so now let's talk about um, what Labsats does and what you need to do. Um, so if you're a customer already, all you need to do to get started with the uh, Labsats remote access dashboard is to go into your Labsats instance, to go under lab tools right here, click on remote access, enable the remote access tool on my campus, and then click on request the remote access tool. Here you will be provided with a form and this form is going to help us understand uh, your environment um, and what you need a little better. It is a very simple form. It's going to ask you some simple information, you know, which Labsat's version you're using. Are you cloud? Are you on-prem? Are you a customer or are you not? Um, what are you planning to use for uh, connecting to Windows computer for Macs, and then any additional information that you're going to request, which labs do you want to show on your remote access tool? And anything else you want to tell us, you know, um, you can do that in that box right here, click submit, and then very quickly, you will be getting, um, you're ready to use remote access dashboard. You will be provided with a link that looks something like that, of course, with your university name on there. Um, and you will be able to give that to your students. Um, so again, um, you can decide um, how you are going to deliver the connection to your students. That is something that you're going to do on your side. That is one of the things that you're going to do um, and that you will need to decide. LabStats totally builds the remote access dashboard for you. Um, so all the heavy lifting is done by us. We build that for you. The only thing you need to do is to fill up that form if you're already a customer. If you're not a customer, what you will need to do is let us know that you want to try that. We will provide you with trial licenses. We will help you get those deployed. We will help you create your groups. And then you would do the same thing going right here to create your remote access tool and to request your remote access tool, sorry. And again, you can do all of that um, during your trial. We want to make sure it works for you. So if you're wanting to try it out, test it in your environment before making a decision, we would love to help you do that. It is very easy to do. And um, we will make sure that you have a, a full pictures of what it takes to use the remote access dashboard and of how it works um, before you make a decision to purchase LabStats or not. Um, again, going back to the connection, that is something you will decide on your side. I already mentioned it at the beginning, but um, it works very well with Microsoft Remote Desktop. It is actually what, what most of the schools are using. Uh, VPN solutions work really well as well. Um, and then a few of our customers are using Apache Guacamole, um, which is a web-based um, remote access delivery system again. So um, those are the options if you are going to request something different, let us know and we can get you um, in touch with our support team so we can see if that would work um, or not. Again, if you want to create a gateway for ad additional security, um, we can help you put that together. It is very easy uh, to do. And as I said, once all of that is completed, you get your ready to use a dashboard. And then of course, one of the thing you'll need to decide is how you're going to deliver the dashboard to your students. Um, so you can put it directly on the school websites. Again, it's what most of the schools are doing, or you can send it through a mass email. You can share it on social media if your school is active on social media. Something I did not mention um, is that we can create more than one dashboard for you. There is no additional cost. Uh, if you are going to request a dashboard for your engineering students, a dashboard for your heart students, a dashboard for your business students, and a dashboard for your staff, it is totally okay. There is no additional cost. We will create 
the number of dashboards you need. So let us know. Um, it really is something that has been helpful for schools, you know, when they want to ensure that only specific students are using specific computers and they request several dashboards and they only give the link to those dashboards to the students that are supposed to use those these computers. So let us know if it's something that you are going um, to request. Again, if you are already a customer, there is no additional cost to the um, LabStats Remote Access Dashboard. If you have already paid your subscription as a LabStats customer, it means that the dashboard is already paid for as well. It is a LabStats feature. Um, it is included for you. We're here for you. We're not trying to profit um, out of the pandemic. So our prices are the same um, that they were before the pandemic. So again, if you're a customer, it is already included, no additional cost. If you are a non-customer, the prices are the same that they were before. If you want a detailed quote, let us know how many computers you need to be access need to be accessed remotely, and we will provide you with a quote, um, so you can see what it would look like uh, from a price um, state standpoint. Um, if you are a customer, feel free to get in touch with um, Schofield here in a second. Our um, contact information will appear. Um, so if you're a customer already, you probably already know Schofield, feel free to get in touch with him. Um, if you are a non-customer um, and you're outside of the US, and I'm sure it's the case with most of you, uh, please get in contact with me. Um, again, our information should be displaying right now. So um, I'm Ben Ploquin. If you're outside of the US, contact me. If you want to get on a trial, if you want to know more about pricing, let me know. If you are a US customer, uh, here we go. Our information uh, is on there. Uh, if you are a US customer, um, you would need to contact Schofield as well. If you are a non-customer in the US, contact Tyler Jacobson. He's your account executive for the US and he will help you get that started. So again, a customer, Schofield, um, no matter if you are outside of the US or in the US, a non-customer outside of the US, myself, Ben Ploquin, and in the US, a non-customers would be uh, for Tyler Jacobson. Um, so we will go ahead and look through your questions right now to see if some questions are um, in there. Um, we have our marketing manager, Brett, who is on this call with us. He will be asking the questions. I will do my best to answer your questions. If it gets a little technical, we have some moderators that are here to help us as well. Um, but if otherwise, we will submit your question to support and you should be getting a response. Um, very shortly. Um, if you still have questions, if you have not asked your question yet, please do so. You still have the options to do so. So go ahead and do that in the Q&A section and we will be happy to answer those for you. Okay, uh, Ben, we have one question from Jacek uh, Kwiatkowski. And uh, he asks, can you disconnect the user from the computer after a set period of time? So um, that is not something that the actual remote access dashboard is going to allow you to do. Um, however, um, there are different options that um, schools are um, using to achieve that. Um, I can get you in touch uh, with our support team to give you a little bit more information about that. But the product is itself, um, just to be clear, it only shows the students what computers are available and um, how to connect to those machines. It helps to show them what's available and it helps to direct traffic. That's what it does. So um, yeah, I will, I will get back to you with more information on that. So um, Paul Wood, uh, he's typed in Q&A, he says, uh, also Windows gives a disconnect option. This leaves the PC as in use. Can that be disabled in Windows? Um, so same question in a way, uh, he's saying similar to the previous question, um, can, uh, 
can that in use be disabled in Windows, I guess would be the question. All right, so thank you for um, thank you for your question here, Paul. I sure appreciate it. So um, again, that is something that I would have to get back to you um, on that because um, that's something that would happen on your side, not on the remote access dashboard um, itself. So um, we'll be um, we'll be happy to um, to get back to you on that. So we have another question from Cordell Alexander. And Cordell asks, is there an idle timeout slash logout? There is not. So um, I'm assuming what you're mentioning is if a student is on the computer um, and connected to a, yeah, connected to a stations um, remotely and then does nothing on the computer for a while, um, there is not, however, um, there are different options on your side um, in your group policy settings and so forth that um, that you can do that, um, but that's not a um, an option that will be directly in the remote access dashboard itself. So um, I missed this, but earlier in the webinar, uh, Paul Wood uh, typed into the Q&A. He mentioned that he, he types also Adobe Cloud License in UK does not grant terminal services use. And I know uh, um, earlier in the presentation, Ben, you were discussing about potential duplication of costs and how their remote access tool can help prevent that. And so I'm assuming that is in was in relation to that conversation. Um, but Paul, if, uh, if uh, I'm missing uh, part of your question here, okay, that is a part of that. Okay, just wanted to, to make sure. Um, so there aren't any other active questions in Q and A, but I, I did want to mention really quickly that we've put some links in the Zoom webinar chat. Um, ben was talking about how you'll want to reach out to a different member of the team, depending on where you're at in the world. Most of the attendees on this webinar would be reaching out to Ben, um, but there's also a link in there to get a hold of Schofield if you are a current customer. Um, and then there's a link for non-customers, both inside and outside of the United States. Um, and we've also included a link to a frequently asked questions article about the remote access dashboard um, that people are that uh, uh, is has a lot of great information. Um, but we'll keep this Q&A open. So if anyone has any questions, please feel free to ask. Perfect, thank you, Brett. Um, and just very quick, I, I just wanna circle back on that um, question that Paul asked about the um, terminal um, use. Um, so we have not been getting, receiving any feedback um, about issues uh, with students connecting with um, Adobe product using the remote access dashboard. Um, I will double check with our support team to make sure that there are no problems that have comes up com that have come up um, with connecting to Adobe product from current users. But we have a lot of people who are using the remote access tool specifically so their students can access um, Adobe products and it's not a uh, it's not a feedback that we have received, but I will make sure to follow up with additional information and to include support, our support team on that, um, Paul. So thank you. Um, thank you again for, for that question. Just, uh, just a little bit of a, of a clarification here. Um, as Brett said, we're going to leave the webinar um, open for a little bit longer. So if you have any other questions, please let us know. Feel free to reach out if you want to try it out. Um, you can try that for free, the solution. You know, if you realize after trying it out that it's not the right thing for you, that is totally okay. We just ask you to give us feedback. Um, but thank you for being on here today. Um, Again, uh, we appreciate having you here. We appreciate you taking the time to look into this solution. I hope that what you've seen today was informative and that it will help you um, at least a little bit in your um, in your day to day. Um, there will be a recording that will be available um, of this webinar. So if you want the link to that, please let us know. We'll be happy to give it to give it to you. 
But again, thank you for being here. We wish you the best as you are working through um, those challenges and stay safe and healthy wherever you are.